What's going on everyone, it's Justin here, and today I've got my review of the Apple Watch Series 4, which was announced alongside the new iPhone XS and XS Max, and for a lot of people was actually the biggest announcement that day. If you guys didn't know already, I'm giving away an iPhone XS on the channel, so if you guys wanna enter that, just check the link down below, as well as my full review of the phone. And to enter, it's just a typical, make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video, and also leave a comment down below, and also follow me on my Instagram and Twitter, as the winner will be announced there on October 31st. So if you guys didn't know, I'm actually not the biggest fan of smartwatches in general. I had the Apple Watch Series 1 for a little bit. I believe I tried the Series 2 and either way, after using smartwatches for a couple weeks at a time, I always ended up taking them off and just going with nothing. I don't even wear a normal watch on an everyday basis at the moment. But the Apple Watch Series 4 was something that I kind of want to test out because it had improvements that I think the Apple Watch really needed after many years, which was a redesign. This year, just to summarize, you have a 30% increase in screen size and it's offered in a 40 and 44 millimeter model as opposed to 38 and 42. The watch is also thankfully smaller from 11.4 to 10.7 millimeters. And although some people are gonna say that's not worth buying a brand new watch, which in a lot of cases it isn't, it is actually a pretty significant difference in terms of thickness for something that's gonna be on your wrist all day. Honestly, I will say it's not the best looking watch on the market. I think the Samsung one does look a little bit better with the rounded design, but who knows what Apple's gonna do next with design. But just look at the watch itself, from a distance, it looks exactly the same as the Apple Watch Series 3. One thing you will also notice is that the crown actually has a red ring for the LTE model as opposed to a big red dot. But the old strap still works on the new watch and aside from the new display, which is larger, some of the other improvements include the speaker and mic being placed in different areas. And also one of the biggest things that I think Apple announced was ECG support, which is coming in a software update. For those who don't know, this probably makes the Apple Watch the most advanced heart rate sensor that you could purchase from a consumer technology brand that is built into a product that is made for the regular consumer. And it is also the first of its kind to be FDA cleared, but not approved. I think a lot of people have been kind of mixing that up. I think that puts Apple in a position where they've already been pretty good about, which is having support for health related apps on the Apple Watch. The new processor on the Apple Watch is the S4, which is two times faster than the S3 found on the previous generation, along with the Apple W3 chip. As for the software experience, so I think Apple has once again done a very good job in integrating Apple devices with this watch. WatchOS 5 is a bit more refined, it looks a little bit better. There's obviously a lot of watch faces as well as some live ones, but unfortunately Apple hasn't actually enabled the ability for developers to create watch faces, which I think would open up a whole different realm. But my personal favorite is actually the infograph, which is very busy, but I feel like it gives me the most information on my wrist. Because previously, the reason why I never really wore smartwatches is because I'm already on my phone like the entire day. I use it a lot and I felt like the watch was something Thing where I saw the notification, but I was gonna have to use it on my phone anyways to be able to do anything more than that. But with the infograph, it at least gives me some useful information, which in this case is customized to show me the battery life, the temperature, activity meter, if I decide to track my activity on a daily basis, as well as different time zones, for example. I think the customizability paired with the bigger screen just gives the Apple Watch a bit more of a purpose when it comes to just obtaining information quickly. The fact that it's fully customizable just makes the options very limitless, but aside from that, the experience is gonna be very, very similar to people who have the Apple Watch 3 and previous generations by scrolling through your app interface using the touch screen as well, accessing apps that you will find on your smartphone that are compatible with the Apple Watch. And I think that's another example of how Apple has done a good job in synchronizing the experience between a smartphone and another device that they have in their ecosystem, where I found the apps that did have Apple Watch support were all very well optimized. Going back to hardware, the Digital Crown is also the best experience when it comes to navigation from what I found. It just feels very solid, smooth, and the way that Apple has engineered it, if you see their cross-section photo of how much they fit into the crown, I think it is a really nice piece. The Apple Watch Series 4 also added haptic feedback. I think for people around my age though, the best features of the Apple Watch is the fact that the active apps are just so well optimized and they work great. My boxing coach, for example, who is undefeated in the MMA, loves his Apple Watch and kept asking me about when it was gonna come out, so I decided to bring this to him and let him have a try. <laughs> so sorry, okay, I love that. Am I look talking to you or the camera? The camera. the Apple Watch. I've had the Apple Watch 3 for about uh, six months now and I can't imagine my life without it. Uh, being a personal trainer um, and a boxing coach, um, I have to do a lot of things at once. If it's switching the music, 
um, you know, right here on my watch, I can switch it. I got the, the speaker right behind me. And also from a personal trainer perspective, um, my clients who have the watch have the fitness app and I can track their fitness progression throughout the day, whether they're closing the rings and uh, meeting the goals. So the first thing I noticed from the iWatch 4 to the iWatch 3 was that it is slimmer. And I know it's not a huge difference, but I just did a boxing workout and I like to tie up my gloves pretty tight. I did definitely notice to watch less than I do with my 3. I know the one complaint with the iWatch is it's not as visually pleasing as it is uh, technically. Um, I disagree with that. I love the way my, my 3 Series looks. Um, but I'm actually even more pleased with the, the 4 Series. The bigger screen, um, I love the finish on the casing on, a, on this black one here. Uh, so I'm super happy with how it looks. One of the things as someone who has just started using the Apple Watch again after a couple years off that I'm very disappointed of is that there isn't a support for an app like Spotify. Apple wants to use Apple Music and I really would like to be able to download music onto my phone if I'm a Spotify user because as someone who also uses the Apple AirPods, I would like to be able to go on a run without my phone. The lighter speakers are also a nice touch this year and if you're someone who wants to walk around and use speakerphone, then you're probably going to like that. When it comes to battery life, Apple claims about 18 hours on this watch, which is the same as the previous generation. And from my testing and comparison with the Series 3, it was pretty much the same. I think two full days is perfectly fine because I don't wear the watch while I sleep. But one thing that I think a lot of people wanna see Apple do is an always on screen, which whether you have your full menus or just kind of an analog watch face, something that is just displayed on the screen at all times, I would have been fine with a one day battery life, especially because I charge all of my tech at the end of each day anyways. And I'm sure if you're going to sleep, you're not gonna be wearing the watch while you're sleeping. On the topic of sleeping though, I think it would be cool if Apple did a sleep tracker that is built in if that's something that you want. Because obviously sleep is a very important part of life and if they're gonna be tracking other aspects of it, including active, breathing, reminders, and stuff like that, it would kind of make sense to just have that option there. The watch itself is available this year in many different colors. I'm not gonna mention all of them, but my personal favorite is the one in space black and it does also come in a nice new gold that matches the new iPhone. But personally, I've just been going with the stainless black with the black silicone band and I think it has a nice little simple look that goes with a lot of the clothes that I wear. There's also a ton of different models when it comes to the sizes as well as the LTE models. And unfortunately, I haven't had the chance to test out LTE, even though I did pick up the LTE model. So I'm not gonna mention anything about that. But from some of the early experiences that I saw, the connection has been reported more reliable. Siri is also a big part of the experience of the Apple Watch, but honestly, when it comes to assistance on a smartphone, Siri is probably one of the worst ones right now. And that's something that I just have disabled on any product I have, even on the Apple Watch. But now I'm kind of just going to wrap up my experience of the Apple Watch and whether or not I'm going to be wearing one and the simple answer is no. I think if you weren't a fan of smartwatches before or a fan of the Apple Watch, this isn't really going to change your mind. The hardware is obviously a bit better, the screen is larger and that was definitely a big reason why I wanted to give it another try. But I still feel like it's something that I just don't really want to have with me at all times because I'm ready on my phone most of the day. And a lot of times you just kind of want to disconnect. And I think the Apple Watch can work in both ways. Because for example, if you have the LTE model, you can just go without your phone and make calls and do simple things on the watch itself if you're just going for a walk or a run or something. But in my case, since I do rely a lot on my phone for email, for social media and work in general, I just find that I'm ready on my phone enough and the watch is just kind of adding to all the anxiety of text messages and emails that come in throughout the day. So I personally will probably be taking off the Apple Watch. But that isn't to say that this is one of the best smartwatches on the market when it comes to software support and just the fact that the hardware is very well engineered, designed and refined, as well as the health features that I know a lot of people use and in many cases do save lives. Everyone that I know who has the Apple Watch and wears it on a daily basis absolutely loves it. And I think if you're someone who even has the Apple Watch Series 3 and that's something that you rely on, then the Apple Watch Series 4 might be a good enough upgrade just based on the hardware improvements of the reduced thickness and the display. I think the big question is how Apple is gonna redesign this watch moving forward, whether they're gonna stick with the rounded corners or they're gonna to go to a circular face, which for some reason I don't think they're ever gonna do, but hopefully in a software update, one of the biggest things I wanna see is uh, always on mode. Otherwise, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and leave a comment down below with your favorite feature and why you love the Apple Watch because there's obviously a lot of things that it can do and I'll see you all in the next one.